taking the dough today. I bought some of these Bobley shells. Hi, right, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Don, and today we're going to make some pizza with some homemade pizza sauce. Um, I'm not making the dough today. I bought some of these Bobley shells. Or if you can't find those, you might want to use some of this Jiffy pizza crust. But uh, it's a real simple recipe with uh, a nice fresh sauce. It's really going to make a difference. So it's actually, for Chesky, the crust isn't really that important. But uh, let's get started here. I've got um, my pan heating up over about a medium, medium high heat. And uh, right here, <clears throat> I have about a third of a medium onion in a fine dice, uh, two cloves of garlic finely diced, and uh, one little chili pepper, which I'm going to use the seeds on. I'll add a little bit of spice to the sauce. And also in the oven, I have three small tomatoes that I peeled and diced, and uh, we're roasting in the oven about 350 degrees. And uh, boy, it smells good in here. You can smell the tomato roasting, and it releases all the juice in the tomatoes, and uh, really adds a nice flavor. Okay, we'll just add a little uh, vegetable oil, maybe uh, three quarters of a tablespoon. And then we'll add the finely minced onions. You want a real fine mince on these. Uh, you don't want any big chunks of onion in the pizza sauce itself. And then I got one of these uh, dried red chili peppers that you probably have in your kitchen. I'm just going to break that open and let the seeds go in there just for a little bit of spice. Uh, we'll also be using a little bit of cayenne for some more spice too. And we're just going to uh, Fry these onions over a medium, medium high heat for just a couple minutes until they turn translucent and uh, let loose a little bit of their liquid. You don't want to brown them too much, so don't get it too hot. Okay, these onions are starting to smell real good and uh, it turns translucent. I'm just going to add the garlic, two cloves of garlic. Let's give that a couple of stirs. And as soon as you smell the garlic uh, hit your nose, you want to deglaze with some water or some stock. That way you'll be sure not to burn it and get a little uh, burnt or bitter flavor. So I can smell it already. I'm just going to add uh, less than a third cup of water. Or you could use stock or wine. And then I'm also going to add, uh, let's see, about eight ounces of tomato sauce, about a half a can. You get these regular size pans. I also want to add some tomato paste, about two tablespoons for now. If we need to thicken it up later, we'll add some more. Actually, let's make that a full uh, quarter cup of stock, third cup of stock. You know, even when I have a recipe for something, I never follow it, unless it's uh, something more like baking for cakes or cookies. Uh, for me, cooking is just more of a how you feel like and uh, what you want to put in it today. But uh, most of my recipes are pretty close to what I cook, so uh, if you follow them, you should come out with something pretty tasty. So uh, let's bring this up to a, to a simmer, and then we'll add some spices to it. All right, this is heated back up since uh, we added the tomato and the uh, the water, which wasn't very hot. I should have had hot water. It wouldn't have taken so long to simmer. But uh, anyhow, let's add some of the seasonings here. Actually, most of them. Uh, we're going to add some uh, oregano. Not too much. Uh, a couple of dashes of cayenne, depending on how spicy you want it. We've got some celery seed here. I love celery seed. Uh, parsley flakes, or fresh parsley is even better if you have it, but I always keep parsley flakes in the cupboard in case I don't have fresh. And the tarragon leaves, this is kind of a, the secret ingredient for my pizza sauce, I guess you'd say. Um, it's kind of got a licorice flavor, kind of like the fennel that's in Italian sausage, and I think that's why I like it in the pizza. It reminds me of my sausage, which I kind of like on pizza. So tarragon, there's a little blood. Maybe a little uh, pepper. I'm not going to add any salt because there's probably salt in those uh, tomato sauces that were in the can. 
Alright, and now the ingredient that really makes it fresh. Alright, now we got the ingredient that really makes it fresh and uh, homemade tasting. These uh, fresh roasted tomatoes in here. And if you don't know how to uh, peel and seed these, I have another video for uh, two tomato salsa that's got some nice directions. Quick and easy way to peel tomatoes. So basically, you just dunk them in some uh, boiling water for a few seconds and peel the skins right off, and they come right off. So uh, let me see if I can give you a picture of these roasted tomatoes. Alright, so let's put these uh, roasted tomatoes in here. And I'm going to add a little bit more water. I had to heat up too high and I lost some of my liquid. Because I do want to let it simmer for a while. And uh, if it simmers too long at this point, it'll, it'll be way too thick. I'll add a little more water, turn it down. And I'm going to simmer this for, uh, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Uh, just to blend the flavors and get it to the nice, thicker consistency we want for the sauce. And in the meantime, I'm going to prep up some of the toppings for the pizza. Be right back. For that, so hopefully it'll work out. So, okay, I was having a little bit of uh, audio difficulty when I recorded the last half of these videos, so uh, I'm just going to kind of overdub it. I actually found a software called Dub It on the internet, so hopefully it'll work out. So uh, right here I'm showing off uh, the kind of consistency that you want for the pizza sauce. I just let it simmer down for about 20 minutes. Uh, don't worry about adding a little water if it uh, starts to get a little low. And then uh, you see these uh, bulbily shells I have there. Uh, you might have seen a commercial form or tried them. They're neat little pizza crusts. They're kind of like a focaccia bread. And uh, they, they work great for low individual pizzas. I also tried this recipe with uh, some Jiffy, Jiffy crust that I bought. It was real simple crust just made it in like 10 minutes and I had that with my nephews and uh, they seem to like it so uh, after you get the sauce like you like it and the consistency just spread it on your pre-baked crust and uh, then we're going to add some mozzarella cheese on the bottom layer. Uh, you want to put a little bit of cheese on the bottom because it helps to keep the uh, crust of the pizza a little crisper. Uh, it doesn't let the uh, sauce soak in as much if you put cheese on the bottom. And uh, then I also have some peppers and olives and the onions that I cooked off and a little bit of olive oil in the saute pan. Uh, when I make pizza, I like to make sure everything's cooked before I heat it up. That way, all you got to do at the end is uh, melt the cheese, basically, and maybe brown it up a little bit. You don't have to worry about cooking the ingredients. So uh, just put those uh, on there, not too many ingredients at once, because uh, then you can't really taste anything, and plus it's harder to eat. Well, I'm also adding some pepperoni on here, of course, the standard ingredient. And... Uh, I topped this one with some, a, a mixed cheddar blend with uh, cheddar and Monterey Jack. Put them in the oven for about uh, two or three minutes under the broiler, and uh, they come out just like this. They were, they were, turned out really good, actually. And uh, try it at home. I don't know why people don't buy more or don't make more pizza at home. They always get it delivered or go eat it somewhere, but we never make it at home, it seems like. And it was really easy. That only took me uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes for the whole thing. So uh, thanks for stopping by my kitchen. I'll see you again. Bye.